Family Theater presents Joan Leslie and Keith Brazell. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Keith Brazell and Howard McNear in Washington Irving's The Spectre Bridegroom. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Joan Leslie. Thank you, Jean Baker. The family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Unless this is done, I will not sleep quietly in my tomb. I will not sleep. I will not sleep. In the year 1789, there was an old castle perched in the mountains of Saxony. Up high, the banner of an ancient house flutters from the donjon tower. And on this bright summer morning, great doings are afoot. Everybody's busy, busy, busy. Down in the kitchen, cooks hurry and scurry. Suckling pigs are stuffed with rosemary and basil. Oxen turn on the spits. Wedding bells of spun sugar top a huge cake. Maids lay out Venetian glass and gold plate on the banquet table. And bustling about is the lord of the castle, fat little Baron von Longshort. Numbskull! Would you insult my sainted ancestor, Rufus the Red, because his nose is long? Hang his portrait here, where he'll face our honored guest. Uh, yes, my lord. Fetch the garlands for the table. I will arrange them with my own hands. Uh, yes, my lord. A rush is strewn in his bedchamber. Lavender between his sheets. Uh, yes, my lord. Throats will be dusty from the long journey, his food and drink are plenty for his servants. Yes, my lord. But... No pilfering, mind you. Oh, oh no, no, my lord. lord. You up in the gallery, musicians... Play me a rondelay. <clears throat> Riches! Is that your welcome to my daughter's betrothed? This the first meeting of the noble Count Hugo von Altenberg and the Lady Rosamond? Ha ha ha, yeah. That is better. The lady dows the bell. Will you come to the castle tower, she says. Yes, yeah, some question of my daughter's deportment, no oh, doubt. What responsibilities I Oh, what responsibilities I Dear Papa, tell me what jewels to wear. It's high time you make up your own mind, Rosamond. Shall I wear my mother's opals? Opals! Would you invite Miss Fortune? I thought... Now I'm 18. You said... Opals are never safe. Oh, stuff and nonsense. The pearls then, Papa? The pearls mean tears. We take no chances. This morning, a stable boy saw a goblin prowling around. Likely a pink elephant after a night of roistering. Oh, hush, Dazzler. You see a goblin behind every bush, brother. Not the pearls. No. Ah, I have an inspiration. Count Hugo brings you the famous von Altenburg emerald. Lovely. We have just as fine jewels in our strong box. Don't you want me to be married, Aunt Dousabel? I hoped you'd have the gumption to choose your own husband. But here's your father set up a marriage with a man we don't even know. <laughs> a great catch. Oh, he's rich, a brave soldier. Handsome to boot. Handsome? Ah, oh, handsome. What diplomacy was needed to win his parents' approval? Oh, but I was equal to it. No, plenty of rich, handsome young men in our own province. The Von Siddits, the Von Starks. The Von Starks. There's a son, rich, handsome. 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 Dare you speak of Von Starts? The family our family loved to hate? Old quarrels a century old. Our proudest tradition. 
Rosamond, you will wear diamonds. Oh, thank you, Papa. Diamonds to set off the great emerald. <laughs> come, 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 come. We must be ready, ready, ready. Count Hugo and his retinue arrive in state at midday. According to his letter, he now stops for refreshment at the Boar's Head Inn at Versburg. Hurry now, hurry. Everything, everything must be. Hugo, my friend, a drink to our meeting. A fortunate chance. <laughs> well, let's take the same road through the forest. And I to my bride. And I to take over my estate. And uh, you've never seen the Lady Rosamond. No. But your castle stands in the next valley. Separated by a family feud. The Von Starks and the Longshorts. <laughs> How Baron Longshort glories in that feud. His men are armed to the teeth to protect his darling. <laughs> well, I hope she's worth it. Oh, she is, Robert. Beautiful. My flower of Odenwald. My flower of Odenwald. You should meet the other pretty girls in our province. They all smile for you, I suppose. My devotion belongs only to one. Violet, my strongbox. Here it is, my lord. Guarded with all my life. Now the key. Here, I have it. Jewels. Gold. And here is the Van Altenburg Emerald. Fool to show in a tavern? News travels fast in this countryside. My men are strong and true. Odenwell Forest is infested with bandits. Lock up that box. Hide it. I shall wear the emerald next to my heart until I place it in her fair hand. No, no. Violet, chain the box to your saddlebag. Yes, my lord. So you'll put a great jewel beneath your doublet for all the tavern to see. What a target you will be. Come. I'm impatient to meet my bride. Blasted woods. Dark as midnight. Stop. What is that? That white? It's only a birch tree, Robert. <laughs> I thought it was a ghost. A ghost? Robert, you, the bravest, the strongest. Oh, I'm a child of my province. Around here, our nurses fill us full of silly stories of specters and demons. You know, there may be something in them. <laughs> well, perhaps. Well, no specter or demon will keep me from my rosemary. Whoa, whoa, oh. What is it? I don't like that sound. Peasants, likely. Bandits! Stand up to the oh, I'll deal with this rabble. Out of our way, we're soldiers of the king. <laughs> What's that to us? We rule here. You, stout fellow there. You're the leader? They follow me. Good. And robbery is your trade? Man must live. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, here's my purse, my ring. Take them and be gone. It's not enough. But we have no more. My friend's servant carries his gold. Your friend has a jewel. We saw it in the inn. There's a great jewel. A rich find. Give it to them, Hugo. Never. Hands off my horse, you rascal. Watch out his knife. Now oh, you taste my sword. We're done for now. Robert, Robert, help me. Help. Stand back. I'll run through the man who touches him. Help me, Robert. Come on, man. Run. The count soldiers are coming! My lord, where shall I set the stuffed peacock? At the head of the table! You, here are the keys of the cellar. Bring out all our best wines, remember? <laughs> And where's my wig? My wig? Oh, where's my wig? Oh, it's right here in my head. Now, is there anything else? Now, ah, let me see. Oh, come here, my darling. Yes, Papa. <laughs> you will sit here and count Hugo at your right. That's correct, isn't it, Dazada? But not so close, brother. There must be a proper distance. And move the candles. Let them shine on both. Oh, perhaps so, perhaps so. Now I must inspect the guards of honor. At the drawbridge. Oh, oh, I must hurry, hurry. Auntie, now what is the matter? Count Hugo. Well? You'll think me just a little country girl. Not unless you act like one. Now, show me your curtsy. Oh, no, no, no. Not humble. Uh, watch me. See? Merely a gracious gesture. Start in being humble and your husband gets the upper hand. I wish we could meet alone. 
Alone? That's what I'd like. Such a breach of etiquette. But what shall I say when we meet? Well, stick to yes or no. His tongue's well oiled, I'll warrant. So if he pays you a compliment, say yes or no. Say nothing. Cast down your eyes discreetly. But you may smile a little, uh, just a little. <sighs> if I only can remember. You never married, Auntie. How do you know so much? Even a plain woman learns the language of love, my dear. <laughs> and learns it better. Robert. I am here, Hugo. Did, did they get the emerald? It's safe in your doublet. I must live to see her. We'll take you to a physician in Würzburg, Hugo. Useless. My wound is mortal. Robert, I must attend the betrothal feast. The word of a von Altenberg. Help me to my horse. Sheer madness at risk of your life. Life or death are less than love. I must give her the emerald, token of our love. Oh, this fever. Help me keep my pledge. Promise. I promise. Unless this is done, I shall not sleep quietly in my tomb. I shall not sleep. Speak. Speak, my friend. My master? Dead of his wounds. Dead. Bring the litter. We take him to Würzburg Cathedral. softly, men. The cathedral is sacred ground. Down this aisle, Count Robert. Before the altar. A gallant soldier laid to rest. Set the litter here. We will stand guard. At midnight, we place him in his tomb. Leave me now. I, I wish to be alone with him. Hugo von Altenburg, faithful friend and noble lover. Here in my hand is your emerald. What is your wish? To bury it with you? Must it go to the Lady Rosamond with the story of your love? Unless this is done, I shall not sleep quietly in my tomb. I shall not sleep. Hugo will never come, and I'll be waiting years and years. Oh, absurd. And it's almost night. Not a sign from the watchtower. Have pity on your hungry guest, brother. Well, I had a snack in the kitchen, but... Oh, very well. Call the guests in to our sorry banquet. <sighs> I'll go to my room. Rosamond, you'd show your feelings like a peasant girl. Have some gumption. That's quite right, that's quite right. Come, my darling, come. Take your place at the table. Count Hugo has come. And I suppose you'll fling your arms around him, Rosamond. Oh, I will. Not if I can help it. You keep your dignity or I'll... Oh, I must make him welcome. <laughs> Unbolt the door. Open it wide. Yes, my lord. <laughs> Enter. Enter, Count Hugo von Altenberg. Oh, a hearty welcome. A moment, sir. I, I must explain. Oh, come in, come in, come in, sir. You missed the road, of course. Where are you in? I came alone. Alone? Through Odenwald Forest? 
Bandits everywhere? Baron, I have brought you the Von Altenberg Emerald. The Emerald? Oh, this... This is real, anyway. Oh, it's magnificent. By this, your daughter will know that Hugo Von Altenberg was a man of honor. Now I must leave you. Oh, what a strange way to talk. Leave, leave. Leave now? I must ride back full speed to Würzburg Cathedral. Are you mad? The betrothal party waits. And a tomb waits for me. I cannot stay. A tragedy ah, has... No, 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 no. I'll not listen to talk of tragedy. Whatever it is. It's enough that you're here. Let me explain. Oh, later, later, later. Oh, oh you're pale and worn. Hungry, no doubt. Food and drink will revive you. Oh, you're our honored guest, sir. Uh, yeah, music! Strike up the music. Papa! Oh. Oh, 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 my impetuous child. You couldn't wait, huh? <laughs> my daughter, sir. Your bride. The Lady Rosamond. The, the Lady Rosamond, I kneel. Now, there won't be any nonsense about leaving, huh? <laughs> oh, don't stand there staring, girl. Give him your hand. Welcome, Count Hugo. I... we are honored. I am overwhelmed by... Oh, come, come, come. You have all evening for pretty speeches. <laughs> the food of love may satisfy you, but personally, I want something solid. Your beauty. A man would leave his grave for a glimpse of you. Oh, Count Hugo, I thank you, but I do not deserve such praise. You're like a flower. That sweet flush in your cheek. You say such nice things, sir. Do you believe in love at first sight, Rosamond? Do you? Never until now. I do. Now I can overcome every difficulty, but, but you must trust me. Oh, I, I will. I owe a duty to a friend. That must come first. Before love. Uh, uh, my, uh, my friends, <laughs> your attention, please. Uh, now, uh, we must interrupt the whisperings of our happy pair. Oh, Papa. <laughs> now, as you know, this is both a joyous and a solemn occasion. We celebrate the betrothal of our Lady Rosamond to Count Hugo von Altenberg. Now, you have all heard of the great von Altenberg emerald. Well, here it is. Oh. Do you accept the emerald, Rosamond? Yes, Papa. And the noble gentleman whose gift it is? With all my heart. No, no, I must explain. Uh, 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 this is outrageous. My apologies, Baron. I must return to Würzburg. Forgive me. Farewell, sweet Rosamond. At Würzburg, there is an empty tomb. I must be there at midnight. No time to lose. No time to lose. No, no, no. Day and all evening in her room, ridiculous. She weeps for her specter bridegroom, my lady. Specter bridegroom, nonsense. Oh no, my lady, he was a ghost. His eyes were wild. He rode his horse like a demon. So that's what you told the poor child. I only did my duty. I gave her my charm against evil spirits. That will protect her. Such superstition. I'll soon settle that. Why the idea? I've never heard of such a thing. These young girls nowadays. Oh. Please, Auntie. Don't light the candles. But it's dark as a cave, Rosamond. There's moonlight. Come and sit with me here at the window. Very well. <sighs> now, Rosamond, be a sensible girl. You've had a strange Papa experience. Papa says he was a specter. My specter, bridegroom. Your father's always ready to believe in goblins and ghosts. And the servants? Stuff and nonsense. I'm almost sure it's nonsense. But you aren't really sure. Well, I, I, I don't know what to think. A news of Count Hugo's funeral came from Würzburg today, but the emerald, that's real anyway. I see you're wearing it. Could a ghost hold my hand? His fingers were warm when they touched mine. Warm? Were they? Yes. Oh, I must look that up in our ghost book. Warm fingers. <laughs> Strange things can happen. I've always laughed at these old stories, but now I... You agree with Papa? Well, uh, anyway, you must forget it all, my dear, uh, as you would forget a dream. Oh, I want to remember every minute he was with me. Don't talk so, child. How lovely the garden looks in the moonlight, Auntie. If I were meeting Count Hugo there tonight... Look, Auntie, look! There! 
standing under the cypress tree. <gasps> Hugo von Altenberg. Oh, his shade. He's looking up at me. So I see. <laughs> he looks far too substantial to be a spectre. Girl, I begin to think... Oh, dear, he's gone. Auntie, please, please go. If I'm alone, he may come back. It isn't safe. Ghost or living man. I'm not afraid. Please go. I'll be careful. Why are you shaking like a leaf? Brother, forgive me. I left her alone. You left too? I thought you had retired. I, I had, but I, I couldn't sleep. I went back. You went back where? To Rosamond's Ro room. Rosamond? She's not there. Something awful has happened. Oh, womanish fancy. Oh, come along, come along. We'll go. An hour ago, she was sitting by the window. Yes, yes, yes. Go on, go on. He came, the Count von Altenburg. Hey. The spectre. In the garden. I saw with my own eyes. You didn't call me? He came only for a moment. You, her own flesh and blood, left her alone with a spectre? Here is it. Uh, 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 you go in, brother. I dare not. Yeah. Yes. We'll both go in. <gasps> she is gone. Spirited away to share his grave. We'll never see her again. Never again. <laughs> Brother, now it's morning. I see what a pair of fools we were. Uh, we will never see our Rosamond again. Like great Aunt Marguerite, she's been carried off by a spectre bridegroom. I saw the spectre. Looked like flesh and blood to me. <laughs> What's that? Well, don't turn white at a mere knock. Come in! Papa and Darcy, well, I'm there. And I, too. Our Rosamond! A ghost. Run, down the They've come for us. Come to catch us away. short. I'm no ghost. Nora. Brother, come back here. Yes, Papa. We'll explain everything. Explain you. Will you... You seem alive. Are you? <laughs> of course I am. Here's a kiss to prove it. Is he alive, too? We were married at Wurzburg early this morning, Papa. Mary. Mary. <gasps> but they said Count Hugo was dead. He is, and buried in Wurzburg Cathedral last night. Who are you, young man? Count Robert von Stark. Sch von Stark? Our enemy? How dare you, sir? Brother, stop this ranting. A stop vile it. plot? If it weren't for your silly prejudices. Papa, listen. Baron, my dearest friend was Hugo von Altenburg. Yeah. Yesterday he was killed in the forest. And Robert huh? came that very night to tell us, but you wouldn't let him. Huh. And later he couldn't because... Yes. Because I fell in love with Rosamond and forgot everything oh, else. Spoken as a true lover but should. But suddenly I remembered my duty to return to the funeral rites. Yes. Well... We're all superstitious in this province. Then Robert pretended to be a ghost so he could get away. Clever, I say. Hey, he yes, came yes. back. We talked and I went with him. At last, Rosamond. Some gumption. Yes, but, but, but our feud. Oh, that's why I stole Rosamond away. If you discovered he was a Von Stark brother, he'd never have seen her again. Oh, Papa. Can't you forget that musty old quarrel for the sake of my happiness? Forget a feud? Well, I never do it. But, well, perhaps it is best. This once. Now this is done. I shall sleep quietly in my tomb. I shall sleep quietly. The Vision of Sir Launfal by James Russell Lowell. How Sir Launfal, the proud, arrogant young knight, rode forth in search of the Holy Grail. And as he rode forth, he saw a leper at the gate of the castle and tossed him a piece of gold in scorn. But because of that selfishness, he searched in vain for the Holy Grail. 
Years later, he returned, an old, bent man, worn out and frail. He found a stranger in his castle, and his own gate locked against him. As he sat shivering in the snow, a leper crept up and whispered, For the sake of our Lord, I beg an alms. Sir Lanfall, no longer proud and arrogant, but humble and understanding, looked up and saw a fellow creature who needed help. And he shared his one crust of bread and gave the leper a drink of water from his wooden bowl. Then a great miracle came to pass. The leper no longer crouched at his side, but stood before him glorified. And a voice that was calmer than silence said, Lo, it is I, be not afraid. In many climes without avail, thou hast spent thy life for the Holy Grail. Behold, it is here, this cup which thou didst fill at the streamlet for me, but now, this crust is my body broken for thee. This water, his blood that died on the tree. The holy supper is kept indeed in whatso we share with another's need. Not what we give, but what we share. For the gift without the giver is bare. Who gives himself with his alms feeds three, himself, his hungering neighbor, and me. That is Christian charity the charity that can make this a better world to live in. Thank you for being with us, and remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater has brought you Keith Frizzell and Howard McNear in The Spectre Bridegroom with Joan Leslie as your hostess. Others in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Martha Wentworth, Victor Perrin, Clayton Post, Earl Lee, and Constance Crowder. Washington Irving's classic was written by Phyllis Parker with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week at this time when family theater will present Patricia Neal and Glenn Langan in The Life of Robert Louis Stevenson. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>